Is your router causing visual stuttering using Quest 2 AirLink? This video talks about a specific visual stuttering issue that you may have been experiencing while using AirLink and how to easily test it. This particular stuttering is not detected by Steam VR frames per second graph. The solution is also not so surprising and quite easy to fix, but could be difficult for those with a tighter budget. Before I talk about the solution that will be in the beginning of the video, I do go into a little more detail about why the issue occurs, so make sure to stick around. You can also skip to different sections of the video and find additional useful info in the description below. With that being said, the quick answer is changing your router to a Wi-Fi 6 router with 802.11ax. If you have a Wi-Fi 6 router, this video does not apply to you. If you don't have a Wi-Fi 6 router with 802.11ax, it is important to know a few things and get familiarized with what you are getting into before you head off to the store to buy yourself a router. For context, this particular stuttering issue happened on a desktop PC with a GTX 1070 that's actually more powerful than my laptop with the same graphics card. All the usual suspects like changing and optimizing the settings in the headset, Steam VR, the Oculus app on the PC, Nvidia drivers, and even Windows settings as well to try and resolve the issue did not work. And it took a month to test and confirm what the issue was. So anyway, if you're looking at some of the common ways to resolve performance issues, links will be in the description below. The Wi-Fi router that was previously used is an Archer C7 AC1750 wireless dual band gigabit router with 2.5 and 5 gigahertz that meets the minimum specifications provided by Facebook, Oculus, Meta, Quest, you know what I mean. The stuttering would happen intermittently, but definitely towards when gameplay intensifies, essentially where more is going on in the game. We need to understand some of the main differences of 802.11ac and 802.11ax. There is an extremely good description provided on the Cisco website and an article written by TechTarget that I highly recommend you check out. I'm going to go over some key points between the AC and AX differences verbatim from their sites. So what is 802.11ac? 802.11ac is a Wi-Fi standard that delivers higher throughput to wireless local area networks than 802.11n, the preceding Wi-Fi standard. The IEEE introduced 802.11ac in 2013. The Wi-Fi Alliance since renamed 802.11ac as Wi-Fi 5 to place it in context with the following generation, which is Wi-Fi 6, also known as 802.11ax. Now, how fast is 802.11ac? 802.11ac transmit at a top speed of 1300 megabits per second, almost three times faster than the 450 megabits of 802.11n. As with many networks, performance specs, the actual speed achieved will likely not approach the top theoretical speeds. Variations in hardware, network architecture, applications used, and even the composition of house or office walls can have huge effects on Wi-Fi performance. How does Wi-Fi 5 802.11ac differ from Wi-Fi 6 802.11ax? As described by Lee Badman at Tech Target, some of the key differences between AC and AX include frequency bands, spatial streams, maximum data rates, modulation, overall performance at the same power levels. 802.11ac operates on the 5 GHz while 802.11ax operates at both 2.5 and 5 GHz. AC allowed up to 8 spatial streams but the hardware market was pretty much at 4. AX would operate at 8 spatial streams. 802.11ac never got close to delivering its max potential of 6.9 gigabits per second because of hardware limitations. 802.11ax would be able to surpass that to a max of 9.6 gigabits per second assuming ideal conditions. With that, AX can deliver 4 times more than AX. AX uses 1024 quadrature amplitude modulation compared to AC's 256. This also includes a 4 times reduction in spacing between the modulation. Wi-Fi 6 offers up to 4 times the throughput on average in congested wireless environments. To better describe this is to look at the specifications on the router that I use with the 802.11ax Wi-Fi standard. 
In other words, faster delivery time and less gaps between bigger pipes and no air pockets in between. So items you will need to be able to test. A Quest 2 headset. Your existing Wi-Fi router that is not an 802.11ax. VR Ready PC. Oculus app on your PC. Steam and Steam VR with the screen mirroring and frames per second on. Make sure you have your PC and headset set up correctly to use AirLink. You will need someone else to watch you play and observe the diagnostics. Now the estimated time is going to vary and depending on what your budget is, it's going to be somewhere around $100 is where I spent on my router. Now the basic premise is to play as you normally would, but having another person there to confirm what you're seeing. The solution is quite simple. You connect to Steam VR via AirLink and you have the other person watch you play. You want to make sure that the frames per second graph is on with the screen mirroring. If you currently don't have these on, your headset has to be connected at least at initialization to toggle the frames per second graph for Steam VR. Once the diagnostics is set up, just start playing a game. The other person just needs to observe the frames per second graph and watch the mirrored image of what you see when you're playing. From time to time, you will see the graph change depending on what part of the game you're in. Uh, believe it or not, this is normal. It is not unusual when you see the graph spike where it turns red. These are parts typically where a lot is going on. When it does happen, there is no particular reason to be alarmed. The distinctions that you want to look for as the person using the headset is a stuttering that will be very noticeable. The person watching you play will also notice the stuttering happen on the mirrored screen projected on the monitor. The noticeable part is that the graph is behaving normally. And that's really it. So in conclusion, some key points about this at least suggests that the mirror display of what's going on in the headset happens after the graph captures the data. The mirrored video of you playing happens after the graph gets captured so you and the person watching you play sees the stuttering. I don't know the full technical details about this particular observation, however it did help with resolving this particular stuttering issue. Even if it took a month to test and confirm and nearly two months to finally get the video out. Meeting the minimum specification, at least for using AirLink, where you may have to make some compromising with balancing out performance issues and your budget is really going to be on an individual basis. And a non-sponsored link of the router I use is in the description below. If you found this video helpful, like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching and see you again on the next video.